In 2007, NASCAR introduced the Car of Tomorrow, a complete redesign of what stock car racing was. Gone were the differences between manufacturers. All cars looked the same. Teams were put in a box. It seemed unlikely that a car could be innovative when the rules were so tight. But then a car at the back of the field figured something out. It was a rare moment when a car is obviously different, completely legal, and immediately banned. This is the story of Sam Hornish's 2008 All-Star Race car. That 77 looks like a drifter coming through the drove. That thing is bad fast. The story of this revolutionary car began over 10 years prior. For decades, teams complained that different manufacturers had advantages based on their body shape. G were known for their ability to shape bodies just a little better than others. By the mid-2000s, teams would manipulate the metal in radical ways to generate more downforce or be more aerodynamic, or as affectionately known as Twisted Sisters. The introduction of the Car of Tomorrow in 2007, uniform body panels were enforced using a template claw and inspections, which kept a strict eye on body shape. Any tweaks to the body were strictly penalized. In June 2007 at Sonoma, Chad Knauss and Steve Letarte were suspended six races and fined $100,000 for altering the right front fenders of cars driven by Jimmy Johnson and Jeff Gordon. And the reason why we can't work in those areas is that NASCAR has said, look, we wanted to leave it alone. This is not something you can do. You can put, make it and work inside these uh, other areas, but you're not allowed to do this, guys. And when you do, basically what we're going to do, we're going to make you pay a price. In 10 years, common templates went from a scary idea to a reality. It looked like creativity was taken away for good. But an unlikely team was the first to strike back. One that was 36 in owner points found a loophole to get around the main point of the car tomorrow. The idea that all cars would go around the track the same way. This car would go around the track sideways. The fact that the rebellious car came from a big organization like Team Penske wasn't a surprise. But the driver behind the wheel was. It wasn't Daytona 500 winner Ryan Newman, or former series champion Kurt Busch, but rather rookie Sam Hornish Jr. Hornish's path to NASCAR was different than most. Three IndyCar championships and a win in the 2006 Indy 500 made Hornish America's top open wheel driver. 
but with nothing left to accomplish in IndyCar, Team Penske moved him to NASCAR in 2008. A strong run in the Daytona 500 was the only lead lap finish and a difficult season for the 77 team entering the All-Star race. Leading the team was longtime crew chief Chris Carrier. From Henderson Motorsports in the 1980s to Victory Lane with Joe Nemechek in 2001, Carrier was a highly respected racer with a few tricks in mind. Common templates, a NASCAR outsider, and a smart veteran crew chief all combined in May of 2008 to create a car so radical that it threatened to change all race cars from that point forward. If you couldn't change the body, you could change how it went around the track. The rear end housing on Hornish's car was angled and pointed the rear wheels toward the outside wall. This meant the car wouldn't even roll straight, with the rear end sticking out further than the front. Skew, yaw, crab walking, whatever it was called, the effect was that the entire right side was used to hit air, generate side force, and add grip in the turns. That meant the car could be set up loose, and as we know... Loose is fast and on the edge of out of control. Uh, Sam Hornish Jr., 29.36, on his first lap. That is second fastest by less than 100. That, that makes that old lap by Joe Nemechek look pretty good because Sam Hornish was actually one of the faster cars in practice earlier today. Your car is obviously dog tracking or whatever you want to call it, pretty much down the straightaway. Do you have any sensation of it driving differently down the straight when you're doing it? And where exactly in the corner does that help you? It's one of those things where it kind of helps all, all the way around. And if you look at every car out there is, is, is dog tracking to a, a little bit of a degree. Um, you know, we, we just maybe push the envelope a little bit further than some of the other people have. Um, you know, it's uh, something that uh, we saw other people doing earlier on in the year and uh, decided that we wanted to try it out. And um, actually, you know, there's been, you know, people running it all year. So uh, it's just, uh, it's not really a weird sensation because you're in the, you know, in the car and you're kind of looking forward. But about the toughest thing about driving that car the way it is is getting it in and out of the garage stall because, you know, you've only got a concrete box to go into so wide and uh, back end, you always back in and out's hard. May 17, 2008 was the third day of qualifying for the Indy 500. And for the first time, the former IndyCar champion was 500 miles away in Charlotte, North Carolina as part of his first season in NASCAR. As he hadn't won a race in 2008, Hornish would have to advance through the preliminary sprint showdown before getting to the All-Star race. We feel like we've got a pretty good race car. Uh, ran real well in practice yesterday. Didn't qualify quite as well as we thought we were going to. But uh, I think that we've got a really good car here. And hopefully uh, we'll, we'll make all the right decisions as far as whether to fit, whether or not to fit, and all that good stuff. And uh, hopefully uh, we can race our way in. 11 drivers have won their first ever Sprint Cup trophy here on All-Star Night. Sam Hornish, Indy 500 champion, hopes he is going to make it number 12. He's got a good starting position and a fast car. strategy all over the place there. We had a lot of cars that stayed out, including David Reagan, A.J. Allmendinger, Sam Hornish, and Johnny Sauter. So it's going to be interesting here. They only had 13 laps on their tires, though. David Reagan, A.J. Allmendinger up front. Sam Hornish spun the tires in the 77 car. Couldn't yeah. get going. That's what happens sometimes you stay out right around there on your tires. You pick up a lot of debris. And Sam had made a great run. He was sitting there in like fourth or fifth spot, and uh, that's really going to... Put him back in the field with guys that got new tires now. Sorensen, Kane for fourth place. Whoa, boy, Kane got way out of shape. That's going to allow Vickers to come alongside of him and make the pass. Sorensen clears Sauter. Here comes Hornish. Vickers advances on Kane, clears him. I still say that 77 car, Larry, had he had not spun the tires on that restart, he would have been a guy that they had to work with. Absolutely no question. He's got a fast race car. He has all weekend long. But every race fan believes that when there's a full moon on Saturday night, race cars develop a magnetic attraction for one another. Yeah, the earth starts breathing in and out, and the cars seem to react to it. And I tell you, that's 77 checking up. Look out, here he Look comes. Look at him on the high side. I think that Reagan, seeing Reagan drove into three right there and overdrove the corner, got up the hill. I don't know how Sam will be on the bottom. This is going to be real testy right here. 
His car seemed to work good around the top. Reagan takes it in right with him, Whoa, and they almost touch. Oh, hang on to her, buddy. David Reagan got away with it. Look at the run. He got off turn two in that six car this time. Yeah, Sam had to get out of the gas. I don't, I don't think Sam's good on the bottom. It's got to be an outside pass. Well, that 77 is fast. That thing is bad fast. Third place goes home. They'll be coming to eight to go this time. Hornish has a run coming off turn four. Reagan up to block. Hornish to the bottom, squeezes down there. I don't like this. I don't like him going in on the bottom unless he can clear him. He's got to clear him to make it. He stuck it. He stuck it on the bottom, and he's going to make the pass. All clear, all clear, all clear. Slid all up clear. in front of him. He'll get second place away. Remember, this is not for second place. This is for who will race in the All-Star. He, he, you know, Sam Hornish is so fast on the top. He's got that thing yawed out. I don't know how many, <laughs> what he's got going on there, but it's looking good. It looks like Sam Hornish is marching to the front of this thing. Carl, he looks like a, one of those, glad, what do you call those cars? The sliders, the gliders, the drifters. Drifter. A, drifter. a drifter. That 77 looks like a drifter coming through the trial. Yeah, and I'm sure a David Ray can tell you all about how it looks right now. I bet he's, I bet he's furious. You know, well, yeah. he can see the left side number going down the straightaway. Hornish is doing an unbelievable job right now, guys. You know, he is. And, and Carl, he ran the most laps of anybody in practice. And look at that thing going down the straightaway. Yeah, and I really like how he's going in on the top. He's sailing down in there. And I can't believe he made it stick on the bottom. That thing looked loose, and he, he made it happen. I mean, it is, you know, we're coming up on Memorial Day weekend. I think Sam would love to get a little something going in the next week. Four to go. That was Chris Carrier telling Sam Hornish that he basically beat A.J. Allmendinger that time by almost two tenths of a second. That thing accelerates off the corner like it shot out of a cannon. Oh, Hornish looked loose. Checkers for wreckers, one to go. Now these two guys, somebody needs to tell them both, hey, you're in the next race. Take it easy. Absolutely, absolutely. At this point, you just want to finish right where you are. And you know what? The man that would normally be up on the roof telling Sam Hornish that, he's in Indy right now. Car owner Roger Penske. Just ride it on out, boys. You're in the next race. Ride it out. Bring them home. Take what you can. Take what you can. Oh, oh, right. behind him. Last corner. Hornish high, dips low. Almondinger covers the bottom and wins the sprint showdown. Sam Hornish is second. Third doesn't matter. Well, Sam Hornish, this stock car stuff isn't so easy. How big is this for you? Uh, it's it's real big. Uh, you know, all the guys on the Mobile One Dodge did a great job for me. Uh, you know, we put together a good car that we think is pretty equal to our, our uh, Coca-Cola 600 car. So we're real happy that uh, we made it through the showdown. Um, you know, one mistake by myself, which uh, put us back in the pack, and we had to work our way through. So I was just real happy. I knew we had a car that could do it, and uh, we feel like we've got a real good car over the long run. So hopefully uh, we'll run well in the All-Star race as well. 147,000 spectators packed Charlotte Motor Speedway for one of the biggest crowds in All-Star history. And here we go, boogity, boogity, boogity! Let's go All-Star Racing Boys! Hornish started 23rd. Within two laps, he climbed to 18th. He was trying to pass Juan Pablo Montoya for 17th. The night was almost over before it began. Car number one, turn one, Denny Hamlin, is it? No, it's Hornish. It's Hornish Sam Wells in a 77. Oh, that's a shame. He, he just got him with the right rear. Get it? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it'll just straighten that car out so it runs straight. He's got a little to give over there. After the race, Hornish explained Montoya had been running the low groove, and in this lap entered turn one high. He was faced with either hitting Montoya or running high into the marbles. Seven laps later, Sam had to pit under green to fix damage. He returned to the track two laps down. After each of the first two stages, Hornish got the free pass and thus got his laps back. After 50 laps, he was back on the lead lap, but running last. In a night where track position was important, Hornish slowly came through the field. A two-tire pit stop at the end of the third stage set Hornish up for a charge in the final 25-lap run. I don't believe who else is coming to that lead pack. Remember Sam Hornish was three laps down? He's ninth and moving on the outside. I tell you, and he's had a bad, fast car all there night he long. <laughs> he was way on the outside that time. <laughs> he's got some right rear to give, though, guys. That thing goes through the corner with it. Look at it hung out going down in there. Now, Sam Hornish in the 77 car. He's gotten by Carl Edwards in the 99. That moves Sam up to the ninth spot.
And Daryl just pointed out Sam Hornish in the 77. <laughs> he He's going to get him another one. He just one. keeps on trucking. <laughs> Hornish has been amazing tonight. He really has. I'm glad for Sam because he's such a good guy. And so is this cat right here. And here comes Casey Kane, the fan favorite, wins the Sprint All-Star Ring. An attaboy to Sam Hornish to come from three laps <laughs> down, get a couple of uh, free passes, Impressive. and finish seven passing cars right to the end. Hornish finished the race in seventh. Afterwards, Sam felt he could have finished in the top three if he didn't give everyone else a 50-lap head start. He drove Penske chassis 559 in the All-Star race. The team was preparing chassis 568 for the Coke 600 a week later, a car they thought was even better than the All-Star car. Picture the sight of Sam Hornish, America's top open-wheel driver, just two years after winning the Indy 500, now winning one of NASCAR's crown jewel races on the same day as Indy. But their speed was their downfall. Their dodge was so fast, from this point forward, every car would need to be angled if they wanted to win. Faced with the possibility of a full field of crooked cars, NASCAR had to act. Hornish's 77 brought back memories of Jeff Gordon's T-Rex car in the 1997 All-Star Race. Completely legal at the time, but the rule book changed quickly. We built that car by the rules. It's 100% legal by the rule book. And he said, it won't be tomorrow. <laughs> In the days following the All-Star race, NASCAR issued a series of rule changes that limited the angle the rear end housing could be mounted. And after the Coke 600, a rule clarified how the wheels could be positioned on the rear axles. With their advantage mostly taken away, Hornish finished 13th in the Coke 600, his best finish of 2008. Team Penske's struggles as an organization continued during one of their worst seasons. The All-Star chassis raced two more times at Pocono and Atlanta, never finishing better than 24. Chris Carrier was replaced as crew chief in late August. Proving that his performance in 2008 wasn't entirely a fluke, Hornish returned to the All-Star Race in 2009, and this time won the showdown to advance to the main event. Well, we've called him Sideways Sam, Sudden Sam, and Sam I Am, but right now, call him a winner. Skew returned in a lesser but noticeable way in the years that followed. Cars at Indianapolis had a distinct sideways look. In the summer of 2012, Hendrick Motorsports teams angled their sway bars to turn their cars sideways. Hendrick cars won five out of six races between May and June before NASCAR wrote a new rule requiring all sway bars to be perpendicular to the ground. Opposite skew appeared with the next-gen car, the 2022 Daytona 500, not to create side force, but to reduce the air hitting the rear spoiler. NASCAR quickly made a rule banning that. But ARCA doesn't have any rules banning skew, and teams there push the limit at tracks like Pocono, an entire field of cars following the idea made popular by Sam Hornish and Chris Carrier.